Good morning to Gerald Salente, Trends Research Institute, publisher of the Trends Journal. Good morning, Mr. Salente. Good morning. Thank you for joining me. You know, I've wanted to get a hold of you for the longest time. I, I was trying to think back. It's got to be 12 or 14 years ago. You were on my weekend Hudson Valley Focus show, and then I believe you did actually an event with us uh, when I was fund campaign chair for the Dutchess County Arts Council. Of course, yeah, I may well have been, yeah, yeah, years ago, yeah. Yep, absolutely too long. So, uh, Gerald Salente, I'm looking at this Winter Trends Journal, and there's a couple things in here that strike me. You have a statement in here, uh, uh, and you and I are pretty close to contemporaries. You're 14 months older than I am, so we've we've pretty much lived through the same experiences. And and you have something in here about talking about the the last four decades. Uh, some say life in America is worse today than four decades ago. And I'll tell you what struck that me struck me about that is that tomorrow, March 29th, it would be exactly 40 years ago tomorrow that as a 26 year old young man, I bought my first house. And I got thinking about how the world has changed in those 40 years. I think back then we had a thing called Poughkeepsie Savings Bank, the little community bank. And I went there and I applied for a mortgage, you know, recently in business with my dad in the insurance business. And the and the local banker came and inspected the property. And I went to the bank and we had our closing there. And I, if memory serves me, I might be wrong, but if memory serves me, I think the closing costs were about $400. And I think about what it takes for young people today to be able to buy a home in this economy and to come up with the the down payment and these, you know, huge closing costs and all the stuff that goes on. All part of this change that I, I read into what you had written of how the world changed over four decades. It's a multinational takeover. And it began actually, um, we really got into high gear with people, somebody who nobody really thought would do it. And that was Jimmy Carter. He started the big deregulation movement. Yes. And uh, people forget airlines. You know, I, I fortunately, you know, I had uh, I was successful in my careers, and I used to be a um, a government affairs specialist, actually for the chemical industry back in the seventies, and living between Chicago and uh, and D.C., spending a lot of time in D.C. And I was flying virtually around the world in first class in those days, and there were about a hundred and fifty airlines. I remember we used to get lost to Thermador. And they roll out a roast and carve it, and then they deregulated the uh, the airline industry. Is really tightly regulated, yes. And it was fun to fly. And then you know Jimmy Carter was just on the news on on Al Jazeera two days ago, bragging, bragging about how he secretly and he used, kept using the word I, I sent arms to the quote freedom fighters to fight the Russians in Afghanistan. Freedom fighters? And they're not freedom fighters. That became Al-Qaeda. That was bin Laden. Yes. And then the deregulation really went into high gear. Uh, Reagan and Bush tried it, but they couldn't get away with too much of it. Well, anyway, Carter also, you mentioned the savings bank, uh, Poughkeepsie Savings Bank. In those days, it was against the law to have interstate banking. Yeah, there was a Bank of America. It was out in California. Mm -hmm. And he began the whole deregulation. All the laws, the, the Robinson-Patman Act, the Sherman Antitrust Act, the Clayton Antitrust Act, the Glass-Steagall Act for the banking. And then Clinton came in, and he was the raper of them all. The Communications Act that Clinton did, the Glass-Steagall Act, one after another. They put all the power in the hands of a few. You're talking about the old days. Yeah, there was, how about, remember the hardware stores? Yes. Remember the stationery stores? Sure do. No more. Now you get a job in Slave Land, you're working for Staples, Office Depot, uh, uh, Home Depot, or Lowe's. Slave Landia, I love it. And what they did, I mean, you look at the numbers, I was just looking at them yesterday. In the last five years, we lost over 65,000 small businesses. Everything has been concentrated in the hands of a few. Again, we're both old enough to remember there were no such thing as hedge funds, Correct. private equity groups, venture capitalists. That's all these uh, bunch of money junkies own everything, and it's the demo it's the you know it's the Democrat and Republican mafia, and people don't want to call a spade a spade. They protect and they you know my you know my campaign slogan is for 2016. Give it to me. 
Charles Manson for 2016. Let's put a real psychopath in the <laughs> White House rather than the closet ones that we have. You... They're murderers and they're thieves. How many more wars do they have to start? How many more people do they have to murder? And how much more of our money do they have to steal? When are people going to grow up about this? You have something in this Winter Trends Journal about, about the fact that people are starting to wake up. And, and Gerald Salente, I'm supposed to be retired, getting up at 4 o'clock in the morning, five days a week to come to Hudson Valley Focus Live. I do it for the reason that I want to see our rights preserved for future generations. And I contend that you and I, people of our age, have a right and a responsibility to stand up and do that, as, as you clearly are doing as well. I agree with you 100%, and that's why, by the way, in the next Trends Journal that's coming out in the middle of April, the spring edition, I'm launching an Occupy Peace movement. And it's based on three simple words. No foreign entanglements. And we're going to launch it here from Colonial Kingston up on the, the most historic four corners in the United States. And that's right up here in John and Crown Street, the only place in the U.S. where there are stone buildings that predate the Revolutionary War. Yes. This is the first capital of New York State. It has its foundation in the Revolution. I'm, you know, I, I fight close combat. I saw my own school for many years. I'm not a pacifist. But I'm, a, I'm an American, and I honor thy founding fathers, like George Washington, a real man, not like one of these little yapping little chicken hawks out there, these little guys with their fat little mouths and a pair of cojones the size of mothballs that are saying, Let's, we've got to be strong, we have to fight, we have to do, what do you mean we? We mean sending somebody else to go do your dirty work. I believe in the founding fathers and the principles upon which this nation was founded. No foreign entanglements. And I believe we could restore America by bringing all of our troops home. What, what are we doing in bases in Italy and Germany and Japan? 700 bases around the world. It's what the General Dwight D. Eisenhower warned the nation of in his farewell address, as Washington did in his farewell address. And Eisenhower said the military-industrial complex is taking over the nation. It's robbing us of the genius of the scientists, the sweat of the laborers, and the future of the children. Here we are. The nation is going to crap in front of all of our eyes. And like you said, people like you and me and others in our generation, we're the elders now. Yes. And it's up to us. And the young people, you know, we, again, we're both old enough to remember the deal. Why were there huge demonstrations against the Vietnam War? Because we were getting drafted. Our lives are on the line. Hey, lives weren't on the line. They had volunteers for Iraq and, and Afghanistan. It was almost lockjaw out there against the wars. You don't Absolutely. see protests going on. Absolutely. Let me let me jump in here for one second. You just said something about George Washington, and I have, and I literally do keep my pocket constitution on the console in front of me every single day because I believe this is the nation's navigation chart, and we have to hold him. Washington said a primary object should be the education of our youth in the science of government in a republic which species of knowledge can be equally important and what duty more pressing than communicating to those who are to be the future guardians of liberties of the country george washington and that's what we have to speak out against for every single day yep and and again you have that also you have you know anybody could google it up his farewell address saying no foreign entanglements and not only him jefferson franklin adams can you imagine Obama or Clinton or Bush or Teddy Cruz or Rand Paul or anybody going to Washington and say, Yo, George, I heard your farewell address. You're full of baloney. I know better. I went to Harvard. <laughs> Gerald Salente, Trends Journal, on the phone with me. Gerald, what's the best website that where people can learn more about the Trends Research Institute? Is it, is it trendsresearch.com? Yeah, trendsresearch.com or trendsjournal.com. Take you to the same place. But again, we're going to be launching an Occupy Peace movement. 
we the people could turn this around. Absolutely. November 4th is an election day, and my message probably every single day I'm on air from now until November is going to be, people, you better be registered to vote. You better know what the true facts are about the issues, and, and, and you better recruit others and get off the bench. It's not up to the other guy to do it. It's up to you to do it and to stand up and be counted. Well, you got it, boy. Thank you very much. You're right. We're on the same page. I I just I just believe this sincerely, and, and and going forward, I'll I'll you know talk to Zeke in your office and have you back again, and, and certainly we'll be up there in uh, what was the date again that you said? Well, well we we don't know. You know, we're, okay. we're just going to be launching it. We're putting the website up now. It's going to be called OccupyPeace dot us. Now, let me ask you a, a question with related to that, and I, I want to make sure we we understand. There was, of course, going back to the 1930s, and people would do well to understand the 1930s and the parallels to today. What you're calling for Occupy, Occupy Peace and no foreign entanglements, does that paint you into the picture of being an isolationist? No. I'm a, I travel the world. But again, going back to why isn't it working now? Again, it's, not, it's no foreign entanglement. It's not, I don't want to fight it. I don't want to fight anybody else's war. And I don't want to be the world's policeman. I no. do not want to be the no, world's made policeman. made this stuff up? The military-industrial yes. complex. Yes. So what I'm saying is, and remember when I said, how do you bring it back? You put back the Clayton Antitrust Act. You put, so that they used to call them robber barons. Yes. Now, again, you call them hedge funds. Yes. And, then, and you put back Sherman Antitrust Act so that it, it was, you could not have a Walmart or a Target or a Macy's. They made it prohibitive. They made, we used to have an equal playing field. I want the playing field going back. I want a restoration. I want a renaissance. I want to bring back the best of the past. Yes. It was, it's been stolen from us by the Wall Street gang and the political front men that do their dirty work for them. By the way, in the beginning of my career, I used to run political campaigns down in Westchester, and I was the assistant to the secretary of the New York State Senate at 23 years old. So I've been one of my chief writers in my magazine, the Trends Journal's Dr. Paul Craig Roberts, the former assistant treasury secretary under Reagan. You know, a bunch of guys that have been there know what it looks like. We can have this country back. And so when I talk about a restoration, yeah, we have to put back in the things that worked before and about isolation. Put the tariffs back up. This is not free trade. All it is is multinationals going to slave labor companies, getting countries, getting their products made, shipping them back and marking them up. Gerald Salente, we're going to leave it right there, but I'm going to look forward to further conversations. I'm I'm not going to let 14 years go by until we talk again. Okay, thanks so much. Gerald Salente, Trends Journal, trendsresearch.com. Go there and uh, see what uh, important information is there. This is Hudson Valley Focus Live on News Talk 1450 WKIP. WKIP.